Hey, kid. Have you heard of the Magnavox Odyssey? Why, no, sir, I haven't. Don't interrupt me, boy. It's the brand new electronic gaming device. Invented back in 1966 by Ralph Bayer, this newfangled device marked the beginning of a new industry. The rest of the story I will tell you now in the short visual history of video games. In 1972, the great Nolan Bushnell created a game called Pong. The game was a hit and many more were to follow, like Space Invaders, Asteroids, Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. But Atari had something else up their sleeves. In 77 came the 2600. It took a generation by storm. The first third-party developers formed, and the industry grew at a phenomenal rate. However, the market became saturated. Then in 1982 came a game by Howard Scott Warshaw, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. This was a straw that broke the camel's back. With the loss of consumer confidence, the industry crashed. It seemed like the end of this fad, known as video games. But one Japanese company had a different plan. In 1985, Nintendo released the NES to the world. It was a great success, and just what was needed to revitalize the industry. But a new competitor was on the horizon. Sega's Master System challenged the NES. However, it was no match for Nintendo's overwhelming popularity. Sega's Mega Drive waved in the 16-bit era. The Super Nintendo was their competitor's response. With aggressive marketing like Sega does what Nintendo don't, and now you're playing with power. Gaming fans were heavily divided over which console was better. In 95 came the Sega Saturn, but its thunder was stolen by a new contender in the form of the Sony PlayStation. Its 32-bit graphics were revolutionary, and more mature games appealed to all. Nintendo in comparison looked childish and lame. But Nintendo was not to worry. The Nintendo 64 had 64-bit graphics and colorful games for a younger audience. It was twice as powerful as the Sony PlayStation, and it was totally twice as fun. The late 90s was certainly a wonderful time to be a gamer. PlayStation 2, like a giant monolith, launched the next generation in the year 2000. The Xbox came down, enormous in girth, Microsoft's first try at a gaming console. It was followed by Nintendo's GameCube, which was purple. Sega also released the Dreamcast, which is their last attempt at a console, but the sales were poor and few people cared. And now the current generation takes over. With more processing power and more realistic graphics, the future certainly looks bright for this budding industry.